Alright, so we're ready to start modeling now in 3ds Max. So I have my scene, and the first thing I typically want to do is set my project. So I'm going to go to File, Set Project Folder, and where I'm setting my project is to this thing called Low Poly. When I create a folder, call it Low Poly because that's going to be our Low Poly Penguin, it's going to create a series of folders like this. Archives, Autoback, Downloads, Export, Express, Import, Materials, Previews, Proxies, etc. And just make sure my folder set to low poly, hit OK. And what that does is that if we look up at the top of our 3ds Max window here, you'll see project folder, and it will set to that designated folder. And the reason that this is important is that when we save our files, is everything is going to be saved off into the low poly folder. But then also when we're working with different pieces of reference art, like we are going to be today, uh, it will also load to that directory. So I'm going to start out by just going to my material editor, click on a blank shader, diffuse option box, and then go to bitmap, and right here is under the low poly scene assets images folder, like we saved our files off to, is that we have our penguin front and our penguin side. When I click on the penguin front, you'll see that the image itself is 1100 pixels by 1400 pixels. This is important so that we know what resolution to create our plane at. So I'll hit open, so now I have my front image of the penguin loaded up. I'm going to go to my front viewport here, click on plane, go to my keyboard entry. And before I create a plane here, I want to make sure that I am set to generic units. This is just a unit setup that sometimes we flip, mess around with depending on the project that we're working on. Uh, so I want to go to customize, down to unit setup, and right here we have our unit setup. And most of the time I'm usually working with US standard because I'm doing architectural stuff, but if I'm working with characters or uh, just goofing off, is I want to make sure that I'm set to generic units. Alright, so these are just whole numbers typically rather than Act, uh, accurate measurements. Uh, this is going to come in handy when you're working with game engines because they are based off of generic units and not US standard. So I'll, I'm set to generic units and now for my length and width I want to set my values. So remember that we had 1100 by uh, 1400. So rather than type in 1100 by 1400 for our length and width, I'm going to actually set this to 140 by 110. So I'm just losing it, dropping a zero to create my plane. Now I'm going to just click on this assign material to selection and that will assign it to the plane. And then I want to click on this little checkered cube which is show standard map and viewport. And when I do that you can see the penguins front view shows up. Now I'm going to go to my left viewport, create my plane, and since I already have my keyboard entry set I don't need to adjust anything. So I can then go to my next shader, diffuse option box, bitmap, penguin side, load that, show map and viewport, and it, you'll see that it doesn't show up here. And that's because I need to press F3 and F4. And F3 will show me my shaded view, and F4 will show me my wires. Um, clearly there's an issue with my wires because I don't need this many wires on my plane. So I'm going to go to my Modify tab here, and under my Modify tab, you'll see that the length and width segments are set to 4x4. Let's set that to 1x1. One one. And I'm going to also do this for the front view. So I'll select the plane and set the length and width segments to 1x1. One one. And this isn't really, really, really important. It's just something that I get in the habit of, habit of doing so that I keep a relative accurate, or relatively accurate and light scene. So, we have our reference art loaded into 3ds Max, and bef but before we begin modeling, we want to adjust the planes themselves. We can see that they line up relatively good, but when we rotate around in our perspective viewport, you'll see that some sides are black. This is caused by the fact that we're seeing the back face of the normal. All right, so the normal is basically shooting out in this direction, but not so much on this direction, so that's why it's black. There's a number of ways that we can fix this. We can crank up self-illumination so that we can see the plane as two-sided. 
uh, we can turn on a two-sided shader but what we're gonna do for the purpose of modeling is we're gonna actually turn on back face cull so I'm gonna just click and drag like so so I select both planes and then right click to bring up my object properties once I have my object properties opened here I wanna click on back face cull from my display pro properties and when I hit OK now the back side of the normal turns invisible so I can see right through that plane or right through that object and this is just going to be easier so that when we're modeling it's a little easier to navigate around the other thing that I want to do is I'm going to hit Alt X or sorry Alt W to enlarge my screen and what I want to do is actually move the the planes outside of my grid space here so I'm going to take this front view and just move it back like so and then I'll take the side view and move it out like so so then I create this cavity where I'm going to model from after I've created this cavity I want to marquee select both of my planes once again and I'm going to go to object properties this time for interactivity we want to check on freeze however if we just check on freeze the the planes that we have selected will turn gray and we won't actually be able to see the image so what we need to do is under the display properties here is uncheck show frozen and gray when I do that now I can no longer select these planes uh, this is good so that when we're modeling we don't actually accidentally select our reference and move it around however if you need to unfreeze them because something's off you can right click and do unfreeze all or you can go up here to the left of the material editor there's this gray or gold to gray box and this is called schematic view and we have plane one and plane two and this really doesn't help us as far as identify so I'm gonna select plane one which is actually front ref and I'm gonna name that front ref so that it up updates and then this here I'll call this side ref And it's important to make sure that you do name your files and name your different instances in your scene so that you are organized because not everyone knows that plane, what plane 01 is. And depending on the complexity of your scene, is you could end up with a scene that has plane 1, plane 2, plane 3, plane 4 that are so many different objects and it doesn't really help somebody if someone else has to use it. Uh, it actually wastes time and we're all about efficiency. So now I have my references selected here, and like I said, is from the schematic view, if I select it like that, I can I can move it. Whereas if I don't have it in schematic view, I can't select it. So just keep that in mind as far as schematic view, it is resourceful. So now we are ready to actually begin the modeling process.